Hi, I'm Sharon Collins with Georgia Outdoors. You know, Georgia is often referred to as the peach state, but it could just as easily be called the waterfall state. I'm going to show you some beautiful places, but understand you're just seeing a small percentage of the waterfalls in Georgia. Maybe it is that unrestrained power that mesmerizes us and makes it such a thrill to find falling water in the middle of a secluded forest. It hints at danger if you get too close, yet it's hard to keep your distance. We found many falls north of Tacoa and Tallulah tucked away in the Chattahoochee National Forest. Holcomb Creek winds around boulders and through rapids before creating these. It takes a steep hike to reach Holcomb Creek Falls, but once there, you'll find a bridge that allows you to see the entire waterfall system. This is off the beaten path. Chances are, you'll be the only one there. There are more than 100 waterfalls in North Georgia alone. Some of the smaller ones may not be as awesome as the giants, but they have a gentle kind of charm. Minnehaha Falls near Lake Rabin is a good example. It tumbles down over what appears to be a long staircase. People have been playing here for years. Before video games and iPods, this was the best entertainment in town. What kid could resist it on a hot summer day? Waterfalls are people magnets. We watched them come and go all afternoon, and everyone brought a camera. One, two, three. All right, guys, look pretty. Helen McSwain and her family come here often, and she has a photographic record of all their visits. I've got pictures of my mother, who's now turning 90, when she was about a little younger than those girls, right about where they are, standing up on the waterfall with a friend, and I've, I've got every generation standing right about there. Okay. We ran into professional photographer Jack Anthony at Minnehaha. He's working on a second edition of his book, Waterfalls of North Georgia. So this is perfect light right now. Very, very good, very good. As good as you're gonna get. Photographing falls can be tricky. Here's why. The water is so bright Everything around it becomes even darker. The camera has trouble adjusting the light. One simple tip, avoid taking waterfall pictures in bright sun. And if you're really into photography, Anthony recommends slowing down your shutter speed and using a polarizing lens to reduce reflections on the water. Some, like Stonewall Falls, are just tucked away in the woods waiting to be discovered on a hike. These falls are close to Minnehaha, just off of old US 441. It's a popular destination for mountain bikers and campers who often sit on one of these ledges and let nature's spa system work its magic. The streams and rivers that connect all these waterfalls attract sportsmen as well as photographers. A favorite spot is Wildcat Creek, it's also near Clayton in the Lake Burton Wildlife Management Area. Wildcat Creek has a sliding rock, a swimming hole, and plenty of spots that look like waterfalls, but then that's where things get tricky. There is no true standard for a waterfall. Even though water is falling here, a waterfall aficionado would likely say this does not qualify. In the waterfall community, and yes, there is such a thing, experts disagree about what constitutes a waterfall. They debate how tall a fall must be, how steep the slope, even whether it should be called a waterfall if it doesn't flow year-round. People visit Dukes Creek Recreational Area because it is a gorgeous place to spend the day. The falls are actually on Davis Creek and drop 200 feet for a spectacular view. There is a well-maintained trail and a series of boarded walkways that lead to observation decks. Perhaps one of the best-known waterfalls lies in this same area. Tourists come from all parts of the nation to visit Amakalola Falls. This land used to belong to the Cherokee Indians, but they were forcibly removed in 1838, in part because of the gold. 
One of the first descriptions of Amicalola comes from William Williamson, a sub-commander of the Georgia Guard assigned to protect the gold mines in Cherokee territory. He wrote, I discovered a waterfall, perhaps the greatest in the world, the most majestic scene that I have ever witnessed. The stream is called Amakalola. Many current day visitors have the same reaction as Williamson. Four times higher than Niagara Falls, this is the state's tallest waterfall. It drops 729 feet from a ledge at the southern end of the Blue Ridge Mountains. It is located near Dahlonega in Amakalola Falls State Park, which is also the southern access to the Appalachian Trail. You could actually spend a week in this part of Georgia and never run out of things to do. Not far from Amicalola is Anna Ruby Falls, which qualifies as one of Georgia's top tourist attractions. The falls are named for the daughter of a Confederate colonel who once owned much of the land here. This type of double fall is rare. Anna Ruby's water comes from two sources, Curtis and York Creeks. At the bottom of the falls, the two creeks become one, now called Smith Creek. That creek eventually joins Chattahoochee River and makes a 550-mile journey to the Gulf of Mexico. Located near Unicoi State Park, there is a paved walkway that leads straight to the falls. Finally, we go from large back down to small. This is Cane Creek Falls, located on property belonging to a church camp. Many people who grew up near Dahlonega played in this waterfall as children. From 1921 to 1931, there was a water wheel and power plant here that generated electricity for the town of Dahlonega. Some 1,200 years ago, this was a sacred spot where Native Americans came to hunt deer. Like so many falls in the state, what appears to be a simple drop of water holds the secrets of history and the beauty of a past environment. There is more than just falling water at work. A cascade like this supports an entire ecosystem. There are often rapids below where trout hide and fishermen delight. Fish often congregate in the pools above and below falls and can be caught around the rocky rapids that follow. Waterfalls also act as a barrier to invasive species. Rainbow and brown trout were both introduced to southern streams in the late 19th century. But Georgia's native brook trout doesn't do well in competition with the newcomers. Brook trout still exist in many streams, and one reason they are able to survive is because of the barriers set up by waterfalls. The spray from waterfalls also creates a perfect atmosphere for many plants and animals. Decaying wood is home to salamanders, and a wide variety of ferns can thrive here. It is cooler around waterfalls, so that even in a dry year, plants like mountain laurel and rhododendron manage to blossom freely. At Tallulah Gorge, we found persistent trillium, listed as endangered by the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service in 1978. This is one of the only places in the world it continues to grow. These waterfall zones also play host to wildflowers and wildlife that thrive in an environment with crashing water, fast-moving rapids, and babbling brooks. While it is true that waterfalls are simple geology made by a shifting planet and eroding rocks, for many of us, they are much more than science. Famous naturalist Lauren Isley wrote, if there is magic on this planet, it is contained in water. Waterfalls may be the biggest magic act of all. You could spend every weekend exploring waterfalls in this state. Just Google Georgia waterfalls. You'll be amazed at how many waterfalls we have that you've probably never even heard of. I prefer the ones off the beaten path, and Minnehaha is one of my favorites, just because I like to say the name. <laughs>